is for a lot of people it's odd why would an environmental group be opposed to green power i mean initially when i heard about green power when you hear about hydropower you think oh my god with climate change and global warming bring it on doesn't matter uh, you know who's producing it where it comes from it, it's clean it's green it's not producing carbon and then what we did uh, we started looking a little bit more more closely at what the government was calling green power in regards to hydro in British Columbia. And when we looked really closely, we were pretty shocked. And, you know, BC, uh, typically up until 2002, they bought their hydro from BC Hydro, which was a crown corporation. And that the money that came from BC Hydro flowed back to public coffers. There was, uh, you know, by no means were the big dams perfect and there was environmental impacts, but there was public oversight, there was public input. And then in, in 2002, the BC government decided that BC Hydro could no longer uh, develop and create power, hydropower. And so it went to the private sector. And what we have is we have a gold rush right across the province that in 2007, there are up to 500 applications to put in private power projects on pristine uh, streams and rivers across British Columbia. And the government is not looking at cumulative impact because with these uh, private power projects, it's not just a little turbine in a river, that you're di diverting sometimes up to 80% of, of the river through pipes that go on for kilometers and kilometers. And with those transmission lines, you have to log. And the transmission lines can go from tens of kilometers to hundreds of kilometers. And then you multiply that by 500 times and you have a problem. And that's what we realize is that we have a problem in BC. The public is nowhere to be found. It's um, private corporations that are calling the shots. They aren't doing this because they're concerned about green energy. They're doing this because there's a huge profit to be had. That, and, and I hadn't seen a, a private power project until I went up to the Ashley River, which is near Squamish. And I was absolutely blown away when I went up there that, that you have... Um, big road going in, you have tons of logging, you have transmission towers there, you have a large company called LeadCore, which is the owner of this private power project. And so you had what was five years ago, the Ashley, which was a wild river, is now a construction zone. And when we went up there, you had LeadCore's uh, people, and they said, we want to see your ID, even though it was on a public road. This is new an issue where it's is this a public road? Just clear out of the way yes. and let us. It's a public, public road. Ahead. I'd like you to move your truck and allow us to go up the road. But we are blocking access because you have been informed. You've not never informed to, us of anything. Not me specifically, but you before. have. Never heard it before. And then I just thought, what's going on here? And and then I thought, what happens when you, you know, multiply this 500 times across BC? What are the long-term impacts? And also, not just from the fact that no longer is money that's been generated from these projects flowing to the public purse, but what are the long-term ecological impacts of these power projects? And there's a right way to do green power and there's a wrong way. And unfortunately, in BC, we're doing it the wrong way. I am absolutely amazed at how bad it actually is. Uh, when you hear the, the public meetings, you hear them talking uh, about these projects and uh, the little bits you hear from other people, and you come out and actually see it, it is a disaster. It's worse than any logging I've seen in the pit, any mining that's been on there. Like This is total destruction of an area. The reality is the impacts of the actual construction of the site uh, is such that it couldn't be called green on any terms. Uh, it's a massive uh, impact on the habitat, uh, on the wildlife in the area. Um, it's, uh, it's not a project that is in the best interest, certainly, of British Columbia. You know, they're trying to do the public, they're, they're, this is not green. Um, when you have such incredible impacts on fish, on the environment, on the scale of this project, this is so far from green, I, you know, it, 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 it just appalls me. You know, this is the area where eight power projects are being proposed that will divert every major tributary of the upper Pitt River. Uh, this would cause great harm to the salmon populations that are up there. 
This area is the last stronghold of wild salmon in the, in the lower Fraser Valley. The best way to see the impacts in British Columbia is to look at the Google Earth map. It's an interactive map available through uh, any one of the websites, hydrofactsbc.ca or ashloo.info or saveourrivers.ca. And uh, you can see every single one of these rivers, every one of these watersheds in private hands. It's an amazing thing to see. And uh, when, you're, when you're able to actually visualize the number of rivers that are being taken from us, uh, it has quite an impact. Mm -hmm.